Welcome to SCD TV. I'm your favorite supercar dealer, and today we're doing a Q&A. My first ever car was a Volkswagen Golf, two liter diesel, GT TDI. How old was I? Well, I've got to be careful here. Um, so I used to drive from being very young. I was quite naughty that way. Um, no one knew. Um, my dad didn't know. He used to know when he used to come back um, and give me a good shout out. But, uh, you know, I had, I had a car from being 14, um, but it was for work, you know. It, I had, I had a car and a driver, and I used to go and buy a car in the Volkswagen Golf. And the driver used to go off in the Volkswagen Golf. I used to make up a story that an uncle or someone is going to take me back in whatever car I've bought. And um, used to drive that car home. Um, it come a bit unstuck though, when one day I passed the driver. <laughs> he followed me into the gate and shit the fan. How much insurance is on my Veyron? Um, didn't really want to talk about that. Put me in a bad mood now. Um, the insurance is 17,000. The, the Veyron is the only car I've got at the minute. I mean, my wife's got a car. She's got a, um, a McCann GTS from my wife and my little girl. Um, I've got the Veyron. I have a Lamborghini Aventador Roadster, which I've put up for sale because I now have a five month old. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to keep the Veyron, sell the Aventador, keep my wife's car, and uh, yeah, that's it really. I've, I've run Aventadors since, I've, since 2012, really. Um, I've always been in an Aventador. Um, I love them. Obviously, I, I don't use the Veyron every time I go somewhere where I did with the Aventador. So um, I will get a, an Aventador S Roadster probably um, when they come out. Um, so probably that's the next in line. Oh, here we go. It's a good question. Um, Dream seven cars. Well, Veyron is number one. Um, that's there. LaFerrari, Enzo, Brabus G700. That's a car. Um, Aventador SV Roadster. Um, Range Rover SVR. And probably like a... RS6 event. Yeah, what is this? What I mean, what 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 is that? I don't I don't even understand that. Like, oh let's let's I can't get my website can't get any views. I can't sell any cars. Let's get a YouTuber down and drive through McDonald's. Like, really? No, I haven't. I have I have been through a McDonald's drive-through in all sorts of cars at 2 a.m. when I am starving, but not for a YouTube video. I like to think YouTubers respect me more than that. 45 years the business has been going for. My father started it 45 years ago. First deal I ever done, I remember the first deal I ever done. Um, it was in 2002 and I bought a BMW M3. At the time, an M3 was the, the new shape, um, just really come out. They were making slightly over list. I bought an M3 and I sold it for £1,500 profit on the way home whilst I was driving it and I was about 15. Um, I don't know what the first car he bought and sold was. How we got into um, the supercar business was um, my grandfather used to um, own carpet shops, cash and carries, um, that kind of stuff and he always had a nice car and uh, I think my dad just took a passion to, to cars and he was the one that used to tell him, oh dad, you know, buy this or it's time to sell that, we'll sell that and we'll buy this and then obviously two or three years later, I'm talking about when my, my father was young, he was like you know, 12, 13 years old and uh, two or three years later when my granddad actually never lost any money in a car and just earned quite a bit, <laughs> my dad was like, right, I'm, I'm okay at this. So I think that's, that's how it progressed. You know, I, I didn't really, or I don't really appreciate it um, as much as what some people would, because it's all I've ever known. So if you, if you took me out of it and then put me back in, 
then obviously I would appreciate it a lot more. But for me, being around supercars all my life is just the norm. It's just normal. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dream, obviously, and I, I realise that the older I get. And I've got kids now and, you know, I, I can see, it's, you know, my brother's got kids also. And when they come round, I can, I can see how excited they are around cars and stuff. And, you know, that was me at, at that age. I just didn't really know it. New showroom is complete middle of Feb, early March, so spring 18. I like to think that we are the market on most cars. People look at us and see what we advertise cars for, and that is the market price. You see some people advertising cars, like for instance, uh, an Aventador um, Miura edition we had recently. There was two cars for sale in the UK, both at 500,000 pounds. I advertised mine for 375. It's 125,000 pounds cheaper than every other car. People are like, well, you're mad. They're selling at 500,000. No, they're not selling at 500,000 pounds. They're going to sell at 375 because I believe that's the market price. Mine sold, theirs are still available. So you, uh, it's, a gut, it's a gut instinct, really. It's, it's, it's hard to put into words. You've got to take a chance. Sometimes you can undersell something, um, but you know, Profit's profit. <laughs> um, give tips how to start a supercar business. I mean, you know, it's it's not something you can just wake up and think, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start this. You know, you need a lot of money behind you. Um, you need a lot of knowledge behind you. Um, you need a lot of guts behind you as well. You need to be able to make a decision and jump. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for someone who uh, just wants to, oh, I want to start a supercar business. You can lose a lot of money very fast. And it's, uh, it's, it's hard, it, it's hard in the deep end. Well, I mean, find someone with 20 million quid <laughs> who trusts you. <laughs> you know? At the minute we have some quite expensive stock. So it, it always ranges, but uh, I done a stock take the other day and it was sitting about 13 and a half million um, in cars. And that would range across 45 cars. Um, the best car I've ever sold. Best is, a, best is an awkward word. Um, you know, some people could look at the spec of a 458 and go, wow, that's the best looking car I've ever seen. Some people could say the same about Range Rover Sport. Um, one of my favourite cars we've sold is um, we had a couple of limited edition uh, Veyrons, a Sang Noir, a Sang Blanc, Super Sport and a Grand Sport. They, they were cool cars and, you know, it was just the wrong time for me. Uh, but, oh, yeah, I like them. Yes, um, I've sold a couple of Conan's eggs. Um, not very impressed by them either, really. Um, to, but to be honest, I haven't sold any really late cars like the uh, the R or the RS or the Agueras, and I've sold any of those. Um, but we had a few CCRs, CCX. Um, didn't like them. Would not be in a rush to buy another one. But I suppose if an Agera come up, um, I would look at it with more enthusiasm because you know you can't deny that they're a great car. Favourite car to drive, it depends what mood I'm in really. I mean, if, if, I've, got to, if I've got to make some calls and, um, you know, you, you can't beat, you can't, you can't beat a Rolls Royce, I suppose. A, a Rolls Royce is a great car, but then some days I don't want to be relaxed. I don't want to drive a barge. You know, I, I, want, I want something sporty. I want something to scare me. So um, a very good driving car to really drive, to turn everything off and drive is a Carrera GT. Um, they're great because the manual gearbox. Um, but I mean, in our days, every car's a good driving car. Favourite car I've sold? Don't have one. The one that earned me the most money. I don't know how we haven't had a, an accident in the lake as yet, because uh, my dad will get up at two o'clock in the morning, take some photos and some videos when the lake's really still of a night time. 
and um, I mean, you should you should see it in the dark. I mean, you can't see a thing. Um, how he gets on and off of it, I don't know. But um, no, touch wood, we haven't had any accidents in the lake. Great question, really good question. My favorite sub 200 grand car right now would be a GT3 RS 991. Yeah. Oh, it's very hard to answer that question. It can, it can differ quite a lot. I mean, my, um, I don't really work on a numbers game as in uh, volume. It's, it's all about profit margin at the end of the month. Um, but on an average, we will sell between four and six cars a week. Um, so if you multiply that by 52, that's where we're looking at. Some months you'll have a busy month sell 45 cars in a month but you won't earn half of what you earned the month before because you had two big deals in that month that you know made you some money so um don't really look at it too closely it all depends how much money you've got or how much money you want to spend should i say um you know there's there's great investments at fifty thousand pounds that could possibly return you you know, 10% of your money in a year. There's also some great investments at 15 million pounds that might return you 10% within a year. So, pro rata. <laughs> this is a great question. Um, well, I'm a bit unorthodox. I do a lot of business after hours. Um, everywhere, really. Gyms, nightclubs, bars. Um, Oh, absolutely everywhere. You know, I mean, I've been in some funny states as well sometimes when I've, when I've bought a car. And the Veyron, I, um, I bought in the underground car park of the Kapinski Hotel in Vienna at 3 a.m. Um, that, was, that was up there with the most peculiar place, surrounded by about six Russian guys. Um, didn't know where I was, you know, but it was good, it was a good experience. This new Tesla um, has really shook up the world a bit. Everyone is talking about this new Tesla Roadster. I mean, what a car it's gonna be, unbelievable. Um, but I think Tesla at the minute are the only company who can make that kind of car. You know, that performance, that range, that looks that good. You know, Lamborghini are not gonna make an electric car next year that does the same, it's not gonna happen. So I think we're a long way away from actually moving into the electric era. Well, um, I had this conversation the other day with someone who said like, yeah, these electric cars, these cars look great, um, they, but the sound is the way they feel, the way they sound um, is what really makes it. You know, if you pull up somewhere in a dead quiet electric car, it can look like a spaceship and you know, you, you'd have to see it to look at it, you know, otherwise you can hear these supercars these days. Um, there'll always be a market for, you know, that sound, cars with engines. Um, I think the world is moving into the electric um, scene more and have to for emissions. I think it's a good thing, but I, I don't think there'll be many um, fully electric, non-engine cars um, on the market anytime soon. Uh, what would I have? 812 Superfast or Aventador S? Aventador S. But the 812 Superfast will probably drive better, but... Um, they're just incredibly overcompetent. 800 horsepower in two wheels. Um, not really the, the the greatest sound in the world. They're quite quiet. Um, Aventador is you know four wheel drive. Everyone knows I love a four wheel drive. Um, sounds great. Looks great. There's nothing looks like an Aventador. So I'm going to go Aventador. I don't really know. I've never really had a passion to do anything else. Never wanted to be in any business. Never wanted to um, to do anything else. I've never known anything else. Um, so I don't know. But if I couldn't be in this business, then whatever I did turn my hand to, I think I'd be all right at it. You know, my my. my Biggest tip I would give anybody in, in any in any business, you know, a self-employed um, a self-employed person is, 
you know, just, just work harder than anyone that you know. If you work harder than anyone you know, um, you'll get to where you want to go. But, you know, turn up at nine and leave at five because that is working hours. Um, that's only going to get you a certain way. I'm not saying work 24 hours. You have to work smart as well as working hard. But if you can find a, a common denominator in the middle, um, that would be my only tip. How big is Riyadh's lens? Well, it's as big as I've ever seen. <laughs> La Ferrari because it's the best. <laughs> Two seven five GTB Volkswagen Golf GT Diesel best. I went to school till I was twelve, and then I had home tutoring for two or three years, a couple of times a week. No, I was born with a great opportunity um, to make something and to make a, a thriving business bigger and better and the best. And that's what I've done. Oh, I'll tell you what was a great uh, time in a supercar. Remember when we done the Need for Speed thing? And I was in the F12 and Bailey was in the P1. And they was like, okay then lads, keep it to 60 on the M6 toll. And we just, you was in the car with me. We just, we just, Went didn't we? Or the other day at um, Silverstone, that was fun with the with the pace cars. That was great. Yeah, I've had like, yeah every day's a fun day. What the f is a JDM car? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone tries to race you in a Veyron, but no one in a sensible car tries to race you in a Veyron. You get some guy in his '96 Vectra. And he just wants to race you in the Veyron. And he's giving it everything. <laughs> You're like, all right then, mate. You won. <laughs> you know. I, I actually do get pulled over all the time. Um, for no reason, really. Because I used to get pulled over for a reason. And now, as I've got older and wiser, I make sure I don't get pulled over for that reason. Um, a famous pulling over was um, on Hyde Park Corner in the uh, in the Veyron. First day I got it, I had it about four minutes. Nothing was wrong, number plate was registered, everything was perfect. They pulled me over because they thought I was young and they wanted to see my insurance, which I showed them, which they still wasn't happy with because they thought I made it in the car. Because all Veyrons are fitted with a scanner and a PDF system. Yes, I'm the best supercar dealer, and I'm also your favorite supercar dealer. <laughs>